Hi y'all. It's hot, but I have been planting my fall garden seeds. We've um, got a break in the heat and gonna be a lot of cloud coverage, a lot of rain next week. Perfect time to get your seeds in. I'm gonna try to get another harvest of cucumbers. And um, then of course I wanted my uh, spinach, lettuce, uh, kohlrabi, bok choy, a bunch of little different things. So that's what I've been doing today. I pulled up any of the non-producing plants, things that are barely producing, whatever. Pulled them all up. Hi. They're talking. Well, so I pulled up everything that I could and got hummingbirds. I'm gonna be very distracted. Pulled up everything that I could, got uh, all my seeds out, got a general idea of what I wanted to do. Um, as soon as I really started getting in, the sun came up. So sun, whew, it's a little sweaty with no shade because it's like, you know, right above me. But I wanted to show myself so that I remember what I planted and when, in case it doesn't work out next year, I'll know better. Um, I didn't put all my seeds in again in case uh, they don't they don't produce. I can plant them and in like in the barn in little pots and then transplant them out. But I wanted to give this a shot because I'll know in like five to ten days if it didn't work out. But this is what I got going on right now. So I've got. Uh, the ruby red leaf lettuce and the Bloomsdale long standing spinach. Now I I like those to be mixed, so I just mixed them throughout this bed. This is my pepper bed and okra bed. So it had the cucumbers along that trellis um, and had a bunch of other climbing veggies. So they're all done. I put a four cucumber silver slicer seeds in there because that was our favorite variety of this year. So I might get a, a fall batch of those to go with my lettuce and salads for the fall, which I love cucumbers on stuff. So then my peppers are still producing. I, I don't have the heart to pull anything that is producing. So, um, okra is still producing it's like 10 foot tall now I have to stand on the bed or pull the plant to me just to harvest but anyway so this is what I'm using I'm just using the back side of this bed for uh, the new stuff which I planted my artichokes in this spot and then down here I planted my kohlrabi so I don't know if I like kohlrabi. I've never ate it before, but it looked beautiful. Then um, my Brussels sprouts. I love Brussels sprouts. And my, my brother and I took our family to uh, Branson and we ate at this restaurant called uh, the Texas Longhorn and they served Brussels sprouts. So good. So in my garden, Brussels sprouts would be the first time I've ever grown Brussels sprouts. But I didn't know that I loved them as much as I do. So I'm gonna try it. So anyway, this is how tall. Like look, look, look how tall my okra plants are. I mean, like they're huge, huge. So my jungle. Um, my pepper plants are doing really good under the shade of the okra. Now that it's later season, I mean, you can still see, look. Look how loaded they up they are. They are just beautiful. The whole plant is completely, completely covered in them. I love it. I absolutely do. Okay, let's see. Ah, cilantro. I have yet to have a successful batch of cilantro. Um, I've grown it plenty of times before, but this season I just can't seem to hit the right time. So I planted the cilantro along the bed underneath the okra. So it's gonna get some shade. It's still getting lots of moisture because I've got my drip lines down. Let's just hope that works. Yes. So that was lettuce and spinach, kohlrabi, 
artichokes, Brussels sprouts, and if I'm lucky, if I'm lucky, I will get some cilantro. I love cilantro. I've been having to buy it at the store. I've got all this garden stuff and I'm buying cilantro from the store. I, re I, did, I did radishes in this bed. Um, I had really good success with the radishes last year. So I did radishes and green beans. I did the green beans along the edge of the bed. So the bush beans, Let's see, put them out here. So I've got some of the, the fancy skinny bush beans along the outside corners of the beds. And this one I did onions in and I have a, my lavender, it did really good, but then I let the, um, what is this stuff? This crazy lemon balm. I let the lemon balm get out of hand and it shaded all of the lavender except for this one spot. So I cut it back and to make use of this little spot, I dropped another green bean. Let's see what I got. And I wanted to put my hottest peppers over here to keep them from um, getting confused. When other people come to my garden, I let them pick as much as they want. I don't, but I don't want them to accidentally get something that's gonna, you know, set their mouth on fire. So all of my hot pepper plants have some sort of red ribbon tied on the plant. And uh, so I put these over here cause these are a poblano. So they're hotter than my jalapenos. And um, they also get bigger. And I wanted, I wanted to try jalapenos on this side of the garden cause I've always had them on the other side. I wasn't sure if they would get enough sun over here, but they are getting plenty of sun. I'm still getting blooms, still getting blooms. And I planted these little, these little purple. There were some free seeds from Baker Creek and I planted them. They were much, they were very late. I probably started the seeds in like the first part of July. They were just now giving me peppers. I don't know how big these plants get, but isn't that adorable? That even the blooms are purple. Ah, it's so sweet. And since iPhones won't allow me to switch the cameras. Um, so I'm trying it this way. Bear with me. It's, I would love for iPhone to fix that so that you could do videos and you could switch from your face to what you're seeing. It makes it a lot easier, but iPhone's not quite there yet. So, um, anyway, so along this bed with my hot pepper plants and these cute little purple pepper plants, I put in some chives. Um, the chives are supposed to be frost hardy, um, along with the onions that I planted. And so I've got two types of chives in this bed. I've got the Dolores chives and then on one side, and then I just have these ones that I got from Orsland's. I wrote the name off of them. It just says chives standard. I knew I didn't have enough chives, so planted. Then on this bed, I had a volunteer tomato. Oh, look, this is a volunteer cherry tomato. Um, she's absolutely beautiful. She is growing all the way up the vines here. I mean, they're, they're like buried in there. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to find all of them, but they're producing. And these really cute, like, um, grape vines. So they're like, there's like packs of six or so on each one. They're adorable. I love it. But it was a volunteer. We let it, we let it go to see um, if we liked it. It's bigger than the cherry tomatoes I had here last year. So it definitely hybridized, which is fine. We, if it works out and since it volunteered, it can clearly stay in the soil. I may bury a couple of tomatoes in the garden and see if I get some more volunteers next season. But this bed has um, leeks planted in it. And again, I think I just grabbed these from the dollar store. I've not ever grown leeks before, so I, planted leek seeds. I have not watered anything. 
What I'm gonna do is I've got a bag of soil and I got a bag of sifter and I will take my sifter, fill it up with soil and I'm gonna sift the dirt all along the top of it so that they all have a nice even layer of real light soil so I don't have to worry about germination and then I'll keep it watered. Um, plus with the rain coming in next week, that's really gonna help. Hopefully it's gonna get me exactly what I needed. Now this bed, I had, it's, uh, it's Crazy's herb bed, but for some reason, I had some volunteers come up and eat two tomatoes. Some of the soil was recycled, some of it was new, some of it was also compost. So I let the, t the tomatoes stay here that volunteered, um, but they just got so wild and I had so many more tomatoes. I went ahead and ripped them out so that I can fill in herbs that didn't grow. Now we've got Korean hyssop is gonna go right here, hopefully. And then thyme, which I had had thyme planted, but it didn't sprout, so I'm trying again. And again, you can see the little blue seeds. Um, I've just sprinkled them all on top of the soil. I'll pat them down real good, and then I'm gonna sift light soil over the top of them. And this is parsley. Um, that is a volunteer basil. Of course, we've, I left my basils in. I've been harvesting you can see which one I harvest the most off of, um, but it's, I think this one's cinnamon basil, and that's of course purple basil, and then I got Thai basil at the very end. This one is sage. Now I do have name tags, and I like that. It does help me because uh, eating plants aren't as easy for me to identify as my useless plants, so I make sure that I put something on the sides of the beds to tell me. So I planted more parsley here. So this will be the third bed of parsley because I've got parsley here, which is like, I think it's like Italian and it was doing really good, but we had some caterpillars like just demolished it. It's the, those black swallowtail caterpillars. So Cruzy was super excited. So um, we just let it feast and Let's see, lemon balm. So I got lemon balm here. I got two types of oregano. I don't know the difference between the two. Um, and these caterpillars, these things have been fierce. Um, I've been picking these things up and tossing them over the fence. I did learn that Cruz's chickens are broke. They do not eat fuzzy caterpillars. They're broke, completely broke. I threw a whole bucket full of fuzzy caterpillars. They they did not care. They would not touch them. Um, so I've just been tossing them across the fence, hoping that, that they'll eat grass or something. I don't have the heart to squish a caterpillar. Uh, I just can't. They're so cute and so fuzzy. They aren't doing a ton amount of damage. So what I when I do see them, I, like I said, I just try to toss them over the garden fence once I realize that chickens won't eat them. Okay, so back to this. Uh, my first attempt at growing dahlias. I had a bunch of them planted in the ground, but the armadillo kept popping them up. The caterpillars took a serious interest in them, so I've been coming out here every day and pitching caterpillars into the water, in the ditch, but isn't that pretty? Ah, oh, so pretty. And I'm completely blind because I can't see what you guys are seeing. Uh, this was supposed to be a fever few and whatever, however you say that word, which I don't know how to say that. I know what it is, but it was supposed to be them. They didn't grow. So I dropped like six sweet pea seeds and these things are amazing. I was, uh, I purchased them from I think Baker Creek. I was really kind of disappointed in the amount of seeds that I got for what I paid for. But I was like, well, hey, you never know, right? So it probably said on the label how many seeds that they shipped. I just didn't pay attention. And I got them and there was like six seeds. I was like, well, that's really not enough to do anything with. So I planted all six seeds over here and they all sprouted. I have had to knock this bush back several times several times and you can see like some of the death it's just from me like whacking on it and not like getting able to pull it out because these things they took over nothing was growing in that spot anyway but what i'm most excited about is 
I don't know why Baker Creek was so stingy with the seeds because this plant is completely covered in seed pods. Like, I mean, they're everywhere. And Crazy loves this plant, loves it. It grows these beautiful little um, blue blooms. And what she does is she puts them in drinks and she turns the drinks different colors based on the pH of the drink. Like she'll put lemon in it. There's a, I don't know why, maybe she does lemon and lime or just whatever, but it changes it from like blue to purple to pink. It's really neat. Uh, it's crazy, 100% sciency. But yeah, look how big. And this thing is huge. Uh, I didn't provide it with anything to climb on because like I said, it was just six seeds. I was like, I don't know how much, how much climbing are they gonna need? Uh, I will next year. I'm probably going to plant these where I usually plant some of my butterfly vine because these things seem like they would really take over. They, I don't know if they're frost hardy or not. I know they're not perennials. I know they won't come back on their own, but with the amount of seed pods these things are giving me, I mean, it is completely loaded with seed pods. So if anybody needs any, hit us up. We'll pick, I don't know when to pick the seed pods. So let's stick this little beautiful thing right here. Look how pretty. I don't know how um, long it takes the pods to dry. I'll look into it, but I plan on letting the whole thing go to seed and picking them. My chamomile was a disappointment. Um, the chamomile that I wanted to grow, I got some chamomile from, um, oh, it's the local bee company, and I love I love her. I love her honey. I buy it anywhere I can find it. Um, anyway, she she sells it at the Midway, and it was a little jar of chamomile and some other herbs, and it was it was fantastic. I wanted to grow some chamomile, so I bought some chamomile seeds, brought it in, and this sad little sprigs is all the chamomile I was able to get myself. That's so sad, right? So sad. So I can grow everything apparently, but chamomile is not it. Now the um, the chamomile that doesn't come back, the annuals. I I have two pots that I just sprinkled seeds in, and it's like looking great. So I don't know if it was this particular um, variety of chamomile. I'm gonna try a different perennial next year and. But I wanted chamomile because I wanted it to come back every year. So we'll see. Uh, look at this lemon balm. It is utterly insane. Now this is lemon balm mandarina. And this is regular lemon balm. This lemon balm, if it's labeled right, puts off these really pretty purple flowers. So I've been taking the seed heads and squishing them back into the beds. So hopefully it works. Of course, our only little bit of lavender if I keep this bed knocked back, I'm hoping that it spreads a little bit more. We shall see. Look at, look at Crazy's ducks. Hi, you guys. They do like to stalk me for um, treats. A lot of times when we're not here, if there's like a, a bug or a worm or a half-eaten tomato, I just completely toss it out. So the rest of the today's plan is to get these seeds covered with soil, get them watered in real good, and hope the cloud coverage stays and we get a lot of rain next week. I know the farmers aren't needing it, but if it could just rain maybe here at my house, that would be great. We keep the seeds moist enough. Oh, and look, look at this. However, I've got some sort of creature nomin, nomin on them. Just some kind of little wormy. I don't know. Um, I had this whole line here planted with sunflowers, marigolds, and dahlias but the armadillo and i just we just fought this is a dahlia we just fought the whole time and i eventually gave up so but that one set seed heads there's a few that that made it i hope i can get them to overwinter i'll dump a big bag of uh compost on top of them and then i'll mulch them real good and that might because of the zone that i'm in it might keep it a little bit longer hope it because I mean I didn't spend a lot of money on them but I would love for that whole bed back of the garden to grow up 
That would just be fantastic if it would grow up in dahlias. I think they're so pretty. The ones that I have in the bed, because all the other plants are so crowding, they're not getting really big, but they're still really pretty in vases and stuff. So anyway, that's my plan. And Cruzy has asked me to pull out her, I'm gonna show you guys this. Cruzy has asked me to pull out her um, green stock. Now her green stock is in there and it's still thriving. It's got several things that's still growing, but it is completely buried in the jungle. She loves this thing. Look, look how cool that is. So my green stock is back there, but I just planted strawberries in it. I didn't, I don't think I planted anything else with strawberries in it. So I wasn't too concerned with leaving it and it is heavily shaded. Like there's probably zero sunlight that gets in there. So I'm gonna pull out her green stalks give everything a good trim whatever is empty um she's asked me to plant some lemongrass and yarrow and oh there was one other one i have it pulled out oh pansies i've never grown pansies before so they looked really pretty on her seed packet when we went to baker creek um she had bought a bunch of seeds i bought a bunch of seeds she bought a bunch of seeds but she didn't get around to planting a lot of hers so um, I'm hopefully going to do it for her today and I'm going to borrow some. She doesn't know that, but I'm going to pull out my green stalks as well and get some seeds in them. It doesn't take much because the green stalks, like three or four seeds in each little pocket, it, it'll fill up really pretty. Um, I like the way they look. Uh, I hope next year, since we got the barn built, we got the garden built, um, I'm hoping that next year I'll have... There's a hummingbird. They're not used to me being out here this time of day and it's bugging them. Um, hoping that I can um, get some more landscaping done, like the in-ground landscaping, like all the way around this garden and um, the pine bed. I have a big pine bed garden out there. I'm hoping to get some more plants in-ground in it. And maybe if I'm really lucky, I'll get some irrigation. Right now I've got like 17 hoses uh, with sprinkler systems um going and it's all on the well at the house hopefully i can get a well drilled out here and that will at least give me more flexibility with when i can water and how much i can water because right now if i pull too much water from the house in the evenings and we're trying to shower or do laundry or wash this just it just doesn't give me much water pressure so i have to like set timers to water early in the morning so i have to remember that you know once they run in the morning before i go to work then i come out here and i have to switch turn a hose off turn a hose on and turn the timer on and it's really not too much it's just every day i have to come out here and turn something off to turn another one on to start its timer and it's um hopefully i can you're supposed to water in the mornings anyway but hopefully i can free up some of that frustration and put get more timers and put a timer on every hose and then i won't have to move my irrigation the overhead irrigation now i do have in bed irrigation and it does really good but it can't compete if you're really, really hot and dry. And of course, it really only is good for like uh, vegetation that's already established. So like if you're trying to start seeds and stuff, it doesn't keep the soil top consistently moist. It just, uh, it just you know, wets the soil enough that it goes deep down into the roots and waters the actual plant. But it's not great for soil or for seed starting. So my sprinkler is what I have to run now that I'm going to start some seeds. Oh, anyway, look. The tomato jungle. It is still a jungle. And my basil plants, the bumblebees, they love it. I was actually reading um, online about bumblebees. Because I was like, okay, well, where are these bumblebees? Like, where's, where do bumblebees have? Like, where do they live? Where's their house? What could I do? Can I... Cause like I've never seen the bumblebees. I've never seen a bumblebee house. They just, they just like find little holes in the ground or like in loose soil or in old abandoned holes from animals. And then they just make a nest in there. So I'm gonna look into getting me a bumblebee house or three. I wanna show you. These are um, from Wild Boar Farms and they are still producing. Now they are, that one's ready. It's split a little bit, but these, I was wondering how good of a producer they would be because they started off real strong and I figured they would go out really early, but look at that. I mean, they're not, they are 
they're so, so pretty. And they seem to be a lot more purple. This, uh, I don't know if it's because I cleaned a lot of the leaves off. Um, when we got back from vacation, I had a lot of, um, we had had a lot of rain and I had a lot of uh, spots, getting leaf spots on the lower parts of the vegetation. And they were pretty thick. So I went through and thinned, um, I thinned them out, thinned them all out. Um, I knew if it didn't already have at least a bloom on it or at least a start of a tomato that it wouldn't have time to actually produce a tomato. So any of those branches or suckers, I went ahead and took them off. I let this, I let this plant go, all of these plants, go to suckers. I let every one of them go after after they got really good established branches on the bottom. Their stalks was really thick and they were nicely established. I went ahead at that point I went ahead and let their suckers go so that I could get end of the year crops which are all year long tomatoes. But and a lot of people don't. Um they they won't let their plant produce any suckers if you so you basically the as long as the plants will continue to get taller and taller and then once it stops getting taller if you don't allow it to produce suckers then those suckers will produce more tomatoes so once i got the tomatoes established where i wanted them and i started getting some really nice sized tomatoes i went ahead and let them go to sucker so that i could get a second and third harvest so and ozark giant peppers so I, I still left some of my um, sunflower seed stalks in here to support what plants I had over here. But um, in this bed, I didn't know where to put these. So I put some um, some bell peppers. I wanted to know how good they would do. They did really good at first and I did get quite a few harvests off of them, but because the between the the, sh the shade of the tomato plants and then the shade of the uh, sunflowers they really didn't take off like the zulus but now that i've pulled back these are now that i've pulled back you know the extra growth and uh the sunflowers have obviously been chopped out or down they're really starting to produce and i'm going to say i've got probably i'll be producing bell peppers until the first frost which i'm fine with it i mean they're they're really really good bell peppers next year i will still plant the ozark giants but i will definitely be um doubling up on my zulus the zulu peppers they were so good they they didn't mind the heat they didn't mind the sun they continued to produce when the other ones started dropping their blooms the Zulus, they just kept on trucking it. And they're such a dark fruit that I, I, I enjoyed having them. I, I just enjoyed the color. I can't walk through here because of this mama spider. But you can see the um, black bell peppers. And I mean, they're, they are like thick on here. So she is still producing and then this little vine here is a, uh, oh, what is it called? It's yellow. It's, um, it's a climbing something. I've never got to grow one. And the other, and I finally, it was buried in this jungle and finally it came out. Let's see this little, the little, the little bloom. Um, it's a climbing something. I always go blank when I'm trying to remember stuff. Um, it's black and yellow. I can't remember what it's called. It's, some, it's not a daisy, but look how big she is. Ugh, she creeps me out. She creeps me out. Whew. Anyway, the Zulu black bell peppers, they're still throwing it down. My Anaheims are going so strong. I mean, look at these Anaheims. Uh, these are pepperoncinis. I, a lot of times I mix these that don't have any heat. These say they have a heat. I've not, I've ate a ton of them and I'm not picking up any heat. A lot of real good pepper flavor, but I'm not picking up any heat or on these pepperoncinis. Um, the jalapenos, the jalapenos are doing really good. <laughs> but you guys, these things are so tall. I mean, I can't even like, 
have to pull the plants down. That is an Anaheim. Nope, that's a peppertini plant. I mean, and she's putting on more blossoms. So they are tall. They are so tall. I don't mind. We put, well, I didn't do it. My husband actually did it. So I had to get, for my sprinkler, I could no longer irrigate with the sprinkler from the ground because uh, the vegetation was so tall, it would just block the sprinkler. So my husband put this big board all the way across the three panels and I just put the sprinkler on top of it. And I really only have to move it like once. If I put it on the end, it gets this bed here. It gets the zinnia bed and then it'll water that bed. And then I move it towards the middle of this board and it waters the rest of the tomatoes. And this bed, of course, again, will get more water. But this one right here cracks me up. Uh, it just sort of went a little crazy. It's This actually is planted. This plant is planted on the other side um, of this gate. It's the Napa Chardonnays. And the Napa Chardonnays somehow managed to mix in with uh these amish pastes i like the amish paste these suckers are really good um uh, everybody normally plants the ramas and the ramas are really good too i didn't plant any ramas in my own garden i did grow them but i sold them the plants and i i just didn't have room for them and so i wanted more of the snack size ones and i wanted the amish paste for my salsas because I love salsas and for uh what is it like tomato like your tomato uh, soups and that kind of stuff watch this this is so funny if I can get it in there they're so happy this is why they follow me around <laughs> they're my little stalkers it's because I'm constantly throwing them treats anyway I'm gonna stop talking I'm gonna let y'all go. I'm gonna let y'all get to gardening. I hope you're gardening. It's, it's my favorite pastime. Look how pretty. Look at that little guy. It's so cute. Um, fall garden. If you make it this far, let me know what you're planting. Let me know if I'm planting too early, what your experience is. This, this is my first year with a fall garden. I've had fall flowers around the porch or something, but I've never made it this far into gardening without just wanting to pull it and rest. But um, this year with the, the raised beds, with the barn, um, with having the extra water hoses out here, all of the watering equipment, it's been, it's been the best gardening year. I've, I've enjoyed this season. I'm not looking forward. I know I'm sweaty and it's hot out here still. It's very humid, but I am not looking forward to calling it quits. So I'm hopeful to have my fall garden I'm hoping that it's a success and it at least gives me until November I can come out here and tinker with it I have, give me a break if I figure it out I might I've got hummingbirds fighting I might put um, some sort of tarp over uh, like plastic greenhouse tarps or sheets over these cattle panels and sort of turn this into these three beds into a greenhouse if if I get that far I'll post it that's a thought I think it'll work um, it'll at least provide us with frost it won't I won't heat it that will just be a waste of, of electricity but it'll provide me with frost and it will um, buy me a little bit or provide me with some frost free coverage and it'll buy me a little bit more time with um, with gardening so we'll see anyway Happy fall. I know it's coming. It's not here yet, but it's on its way. We're for September 2nd today. So happy fall. Happy gardening.